Got my iPad for notes because I don't want to miss anything. This is the Hey Gears system. I love the name, Hey Gears. It's like, hey, gears. They have the Reflex system, which is the printer, the resin printer, the wash station, and the cure station. And it's this ecosystem of resin awesomeness. And it is easily one of the coolest things that I've yet experienced in resin. The 3D printer itself, the, the Ultracraft Reflex, it's awesome. It's got a 5760 by 3600 resolution LCD, and that's over 9.25 inches on the diagonal. And it's got a 33 micrometer pixel accuracy. The build volume itself, 192 on X, 121 on Y, and 220 on Z or Z. The light source that it's using is cob lighting, chip on board lighting. It's this really cool technology that seems perfectly suited for what a resin printer needs. And so I highly suggest you check it out. I was reading up on it and I was like, that's a really good idea. Hopefully you think the same. So for this, I used Blueprint, which is Hagear's slicer. And when I originally tried all of this stuff, it was a web-based slicer. Further down the road, they had developed the apps for download, I believe PC, M1, M2, Mac. I was able to install the app and slice there as well. But regardless of the web-based slicer or the desktop slicer, I could wirelessly send the print to the printer right here. In Blueprint, when you're loading your models, if you load one that is not pre-supported, like a lot of the Photos Mint models, but any model that is not pre-supported, and if Blueprint generates the supports, it uses something called the PIC algorithm, P-I-C-K. And here, I wrote this down. PIC identifies model and support areas in each layer, optimizing exposure for stronger supports, reducing support quantity, also achieving smoother model surface. So what Blueprint is doing is changing the exposure settings for the model versus the support that it's added to the model. That seems really cool and not something that I was aware of anyone else doing before. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's a point in its favor. Resin is loaded, these things, in the back of the machine right here and it senses it using RFID so it knows which type of resin you've put in and then the flow of resin is controlled by something called a sluice gate. Tell me about that. So the sluice gate can work in conjunction with the resin monitor that kind of hangs three metal prongs down into the vat. And if you start a print and it doesn't sense there's enough resin, the sluice gate can open up and allow resin to fill the vat so you have enough for the print to start. Also, if you're printing and the resin sensor senses that there's not enough resin during the print, it will automatically open the sluice gate to let some resin in and then close it when it's appropriate. I find this fascinating. I find it absolutely fascinating that a, a mechanical feature is keeping the resin behind this dam, essentially. It's, it's, like, it's like this sluice gate is like this little resin beaver building a dam and then opening the dam whenever the resin wants to flow. It's really cool, it's fun to watch, and again, a point in its favor. When prints are done, um, it's just like any other resin machine at this point, so you unlock the build plate, you bring it over to your surface or work area, and you begin to manually convince the print to release itself from the build plate. Okay, your model is off the build plate, it's time to wash it, and that's where the Ultracraft wash station comes into play. And here, I, I wrote this little tagline for it. The wash machine uses a two container system and a Hawaii chair-like motion to clean the printed models. A two container system, that means there are two different containers, one wet, one dry-ish. One is always gonna have the isopropyl alcohol in it and one will not. The official Hagear's workflow is to open up the container that has all the isopropyl alcohol in it and then dropping your model in. Once that's done, you can seal it back up and then you bring it over to the wash station. And from there, you can start the wash. However, in this case, I'm opening this up and I'm exposing myself to the vapors of isopropyl alcohol and I am sensitive to these. So instead, I did something a little different. The workflow that I followed is I would take the dry container, put my model in it, put the wet container on top of it and then open the valve which drained the IPA into 
the container that had my model. It's really a neat way to think about it because then there's no tray that you have to set somewhere and you don't have to stick a hopefully gloved hand into a giant pool of isopropyl alcohol to try to retrieve your prints. I love the way this does it. Now for the Hawaii chair, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Hawaii chair, but back in the day on Attack of the Show on G4, my buddy Kevin Pereira, he hosted it with Olivia Munn. They talked about this Hawaii chair. This is truly the machine that takes the work out of your workout. It was a chair that you sat in and it did this kind of motion and it hopefully kept you limber while at your office. But it doesn't stop, Here, but you, no, have stop to, you have to power it down. Here's what's great though. The same print file you sent to this machine, you can send to the wash machine and that pre-programs it for the speed and duration that you need to wash the model that you just printed because contained within it are the settings for the type of resin that you've printed your model in. I love that. This is awesome. And what's great is you can send it from your PC or laptop, but also they have a mobile app and you can send the print job that just printed here to the wash station and it'll pre-program it appropriately. I love it. Your models are washed. Once you, once you exhume your model from the dry container, because remember you've siphoned all of that isopropyl alcohol down, you then take the model out, and for me, supports were easily removed. Both pre-supported models and supports that Blueprint added. You've taken off the supports, and now it's time for that final step of curing your model, and that's where the cure machine comes into play. And just like the printer, just like the wash station, the cure station, you can send the print file to, and it will pre-program it for duration and chamber heat for the material you use to print your print. It's an ecosystem. Yay! The cure machine is a box with a refrigerator-like door on the front. It's full of mirrors, a turntable, and UV LEDs. You put your model inside, and thanks to sending that print file over, it's already pre-configured for the duration and the amount of heat you need to cure it. You can also manually do this, just like you can manually set the wash station. But I mean, if you have the ability to just pre-program it, when you're sending the print to this, you send it to those as well, and everything is just ready. You just go one, two, three. Bend. Now you've seen a lot of footage of the prints that I've printed with this machine and, and here they are in front of me. I just want to make sure I call these out. This is Spider-Man 2099 by Wexter. This is Ahsoka Pony by Hex3D. This is the Teeth Mug by Dave Makes Stuff and it's unique. What? This is Anku by Wexter and over here is the last thing I want to talk about because this is La Katrina by Photos Mint, pre-supported by Charles Zuck, and printed with the Hay Gears CMYK Custom Resin Solution. Here's how that works. They give you a swatch with colors that you can make, and then you take that to a little spreadsheet and it tells you the formula. I picked blue. You're shocked, I'm sure. The recipe for making the blue is available on the spreadsheet in parts, and so I used cyan and I used white to make the proper blue. And it was really easy. You, you have a little scale. I did it by weight and then you mix it up with a stirring rod. You gently pour it into the vat. Even though you haven't put in something in the back to tell it what kind of resin it is, you've pre-programmed your model to print appropriately so it shouldn't be a problem. And then you just print like normal. Then you get the model out and you do the washing, you do the curing, and then you get yourself a La Katrina. And oh my gosh, it looks amazing. All of these models look amazing. I am really, really happy with the results of this resin ecosystem. I'm super proud of you guys. So for resin, at the end of the day, what I want is something that makes it easy, something that is pre-configured, something that aids in the cleanup, something that produces great results. And I think what I've experienced with Hay Gears checks off all of those boxes. The printer itself produces great models of high detail. The wash station can be manually or automatically configured to wash all of the stuff that you want. And using that two bucket system means less chance of having to dip your hand in a bunch of isopropyl alcohol. And then the cure station fully cures your model. And at the end of the day, when you've done all of this and you pull your model, from that cure station and look at it, well, if you're me, 
you're really happy. So that's the Hagear system. Uh, I've got a link in the description if you wanna check it out. I'm really happy with what they did and I'm so thankful they wanted me to have me talk to you about it. And if there's anything that you think I should print on this, let me know in the comments. If you made this fire awesome, don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and print all the things in resin. And as always, high five.